it's a book um, that uh, both sort of tries to give a portrait of what was happening in the early 1990s, uh, but that portrait uh, doesn't involve just words. It also involves um, photos, and that was the focus of the exhibit uh, that also traveled. So I don't know whether you're going to be able to see this. I'm actually going to um, open up the catalog of photos um, and uh, try to show you um, some of the photos. So they're all black and white photos. Um, some of them uh, very much focused on the earthquake area, since that was one of the locations where we did the interviews. I'm also though going to flip here. Um, here's some more um, of the earthquake photos. You see several pictures here of soldiers that were injured in the war and were brought back to the military hospital in Stepanagert. And one of the things that really touched me personally was that uh, as the helicopters came in bringing the wounded, there would be women who would be waiting there to see if their husbands were one of the soldiers that were returning. And um, let me also see if there are some other photos that I can show you. And this particular photo uh, really touched me um, of two children uh, pointing to their father who had been killed in the conflict. The exhibit that was in the Senate uh, Rotunda in Washington, D.C. And what was uh, surprising to me, I actually received some uh, letters that were not form letters. They were actually, in a few instances, even handwritten notes uh, by members of Congress who had seen the exhibit. Uh, we also had mailed copies of this catalog to members of Congress. And these were individuals who themselves were um, some closet photographers or had some uh, appreciation of the art of good photography. And so I think, frankly, the pictures really touched individuals in a way that maybe the text of just writing did not. And um, hopefully uh, we, in some small way, uh, through this book, but also the exhibit of photographs uh, had some influence on the U.S. Congress in terms of aid that then went um, to Artsakh, um, but also to the earthquake region. Now, your question about the uh, conflicts um, and the pogroms against Armenia um, in Azerbaijan, if you actually look at just the number of people who were killed, the Armenians killed, it was a relatively small number, which I think in itself does not explain why thousands of Armenians left a rather secure uh, homeland that they had made over a generation or more in Azerbaijan, left good jobs, their houses and so forth, and fled. But I think uh, the reason they did was the echo in their own mind that this might be a repeat of the genocide that occurred in 1915. And so there very much, I think, was a kind of layering of the genocide that claimed a million and a half Armenians in Western Armenia or Eastern Turkey and uh, a fear that the same thing might also happen um, to them. And um, I particularly remember that there were attacks uh, on Armenians actually celebrating the fact that the earthquake occurred in Armenia uh, on December 7th, uh, 1988. And um, the inhumanity that um, 
Azaris could celebrate, uh, to me that's just heart-wrenching. And so I think it contributed in a major way uh, to Armenians feeling that they needed to flee from um, their homeland um, in Azerbaijan. I don't think in the U.S. press there was that much attention uh, to the pogroms in uh, Azerbaijan against Armenians. Uh, there was much more attention actually, of course, with the earthquake um, and the magnitude of the earthquake. I think the uniqueness of our project was seeing these two in relationship to each other because Armenians that then fled uh, for their lives to Armenia from Azerbaijan, uh, for some of them, th they didn't even speak Armenian, or at least their Armenian was very poor. Uh, it was almost like moving to a new culture. Uh, these were people who, in many instances, had been very affluent, uh, and now they were coming into a context, particularly in the early 1990s, because of the blockades against Armenia, uh, where they lived extremely uh, tenuous lives, were extremely poor, um, and had great difficulty supporting themselves. I remember being very struck by uh, particularly those living in Artsakh that um, it was more than just geography. There was a sense in which the soul of the Armenian people uh, resided um, there. And uh, they were not just fighting a war. Uh, they, were, uh, they were fighting for their destiny. And my understanding now, uh, and when I returned a few years ago to Artsakh, um, it was an unbe unbelievably different place. Um, and um, uh, I'm just delighted that um, it's been able to prosper in the way that it has. Um, uh, I'm, uh, I, I have fond memories of the vineyards <laughs> and also of uh, sort of the richness of the soil itself um, and the opportunities that exist um, in that being uh, a homeland for the Armenian people.